Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Welcome back to Kettle Cam here in Alexandria, Virginia. Now, one of the prizes that goes to the individual who raises the most money in the National Commander's Bell Ringing Challenge is a trip to the Cowboys game in Dallas, Texas for Thanksgiving Day when we do the Red Kettle kickoff. And just a couple of, I guess it was just last week, my wife and I were in Dallas and we had two very, very special guests and their children. They were the winners of last year's National Commander's Bell Ringing Challenge. And we've got a live remote to him today, Major Greg Thompson in Omaha, Nebraska. How are you, Major? Well, we're doing very well, thank you. Is It doesn't look as though it's cold there at all. It's freezing it, here. You know what? It's a beautiful day in Nebraska. It's been 60 degrees all day long. It's, it's just a wonderful day. Well, you know, that that is only giving more uh, credence to the notion that you should raise far more than you did last okay. year. Well, I tell you what I tell you what I'm doing this year. OK, uh, we are doing we are doing a best kettle day ever. That's what's happening here in Omaha. And we've challenged, along with your challenge, we've challenged realtors in the area, and we've got matching donations coming in for this day. And wow. I think we're we're going to do it. I don't know that we'll do it in one kettle this year, but we're going to do it. <laughs> oh, that is spectacular. That is spectacular. What you and your team did last year was just amazing. Over $50,000 in yep. one kettle in four hours. That was just astonishing. It was. It was. I, and because I'm surrounded by what a generous, very, very generous community, a great advisory board, a great women's auxiliary, and a fabulous community that supports the Salvation Army so well here in Omaha. Oh, absolutely right. Absolutely right. Tell us a little bit about what's going on in Omaha in terms of service, Major. Well, we are seeing a bit of an uptick this year in the number of people who come coming to us for service. We serve about fifteen to 16,000 people here in in Omaha this year, and that's about 10% over where we did last year. So wow. I think the I think things are still not recovered from uh, the, eco the economic recovery and things like that. While it seems like it's better, there are still lots of places where it's not, especially with the uh, with the gas prices we're seeing, the uh, uptick in rent here, and the uptick in utilities, and and how much it's just costing to live is is really causing still uh, um, an opportunity for people to be marginalized because of that. Oh, you're absolutely right. We're seeing that across the nation. You know, uh, people think the pandemic, when it ends, uh, when it when it does end, we're looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah. Uh, that that mm -hmm. things are going to automatically return to normal. It just doesn't work that way for the people that are most vulnerable, and they're going to continue to have needs. In fact, those needs will change and evolve and even grow uh, for the next couple of years. Correct. Yeah, that that and that's exactly what we see not only throughout the pandemic, but even as we en enter into what is called recovery, um, yeah. it, it's not really playing out for everyone as, as we would hope. That's exactly right. But I'm confident that you're going to more than exceed the fifty thousand dollars that you raised last year in your kettle. So who knows? You might be sitting next <laughs> to me at the ne at next year's Dallas Cowboys game. Although I know that there are lots of officers across I'm the nation. Who who yes. want that spot? So I don't know. It's not guaranteed, Major. You, I, I'm still giving you kudos and an A plus for effort, my friend. <laughs> you're, you're 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 challenging me on. I appreciate it. <laughs> God bless you, Major Greg Thompson. Thank you for everything that you and your wife and your whole team are doing in Omaha. Yeah. We could not be prouder, and I know that the Lord uh, is so pleased by the service and the love that you're extending to the people of that community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. God bless you, Major. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Yep. All righty. Bye-bye. I've been playing the cornet for, like, well, since I was nine, and I am 22. A lot of my uh, family friends were coming here, and they had invited me and my family to come. And that's how we got started here. I got to know Matt and the core officers that were here and just grew to be family. Matt has always been energetic, just welcoming, just a nice guy. He just, he was like a big brother to me. 
This is my 16th year working at the Salvation Army here as the youth director. I love my job. I love the fact that I'm literally getting paid to just tell people about Jesus and, and love others. And that's phenomenal to me. It's really neat to walk through those exact same doors you know, 20 years later and think to myself, I walked through here as a teenager in trouble and they brought me in and loved me exactly the way I was. I didn't have to change for them. They just took me right in. And now I get the opportunity to see kids walk through the same door, however they're feeling, and just to bring them right in and love them no matter where they're at in life, no matter what they're going through, to see them for their potential of who they could be, not for where they're at, just like they did to me when I first walked in. So I had my son when I was 17, so I was really young and I was just finishing high school. And so it just really helped that like, I was able to drop him off here every day before I went to class. and they would help watch him for me and they would just do everything. I would just drop him off every morning. They would watch until I got done with school. Then I'd pick him up and they never complained about it at all. And they just helped me out a lot. And they all just love him like they're his, like he's theirs. So it's just like one big family and it's really nice. From his first steps to his dance moves, yep. Been in this church. They'd be preaching, he's just rolling around in his little walker during church. So yeah, this is just home. We attended earlier today the DJ Heroes presentation, which honors young people who have overcome adversity in order to achieve great things and who aspire to great things. And I can't help but associate the program that we saw today and the marvelous mm -hmm. young people that we met with what the Kroc Center is doing right here, right now. Joan Kroc wanted children to have a place in which they could thrive in every sense. And you know, we couldn't do this without the donors, with all of the yes. donors who give to the Salvation Army throughout the year. It's because of them we're able to reach so many lives. That's right, and here in Omaha, there are so many people that support the work of the Salvation Army, and we just have to say thank you to them for making this possible. Because of their kindness and the commitment of the staff, at this facility and in other places across Omaha, lives are truly being changed and futures are being altered in ways that we won't fully understand, perhaps even for generations to come. But we do know it will all be for the good. So take time to give to the Salvation Army because we promise that your money will be put to good use. What a great conversation with Major Greg Thompson from Omaha. That video that you've just seen, which details all those marvelous services in Omaha, was one of the prizes uh, that we offered as a result of their winning the uh, National Commander's Bell Ringing Challenge last year. And whichever community, uh, pardon me, whichever community wins this year will also have the chance to have NHQ do such a video which they can use for promotion throughout the year to let folks know about how much the Salvation Army does. The Salvation Army is in 7,600 locations around.